uh, and in this and this and in Hello, my name is Ian J. Cole and welcome to our channel. This is Jane. Hi. This is the last post Edinburgh Fringe vlog we're going to do. Bottom lip. Sad face. Um, and in this one, we're going to just go through some of the shows that we really wanted to see while we were in Edinburgh, um, but never got to see. Uh, some of these came from recommendations, some of them are things that we just fancied. Uh, some of them were conversations that we had with people on the street. Yeah. And we're going to do it alternate. Okay, so we've got about six uh, six each, something like that. Something like that. Okay, shall I start? You start, you've got the most. Okay, I'll start. Right, my first one is actually, um, we've had two recommendations on this. One of them was by one of our followers on YouTube, John Church. Thank you very much, John. Uh, and he recommended Only Bones I.O., uh, and actually somebody else from while we were in Edinburgh did, I sat and again, yeah. just somebody we met said, you need to go see that. And so what I've done is I've just looked up on the Fringe app um, and it's physical dance, circus clownery, um, only bones, quirky, low tech aesthetic strips the stage down to one performer. Um, and it's a New Zealand Fringe Award winner in physical theatre in 2015 and has quite a lot of uh, five star reviews. Uh, five stars from the Herald, uh, mind blowing five stars from across the arts, extraordinary inventiveness created by a limited imagination theatre review of, of New Zealand. So and it's such a shame actually that we never got to see that show. Mm. So mm. if you are at Edinburgh Fringe now uh, or you're going before the end of the month, uh, it's, it's one to go and see. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, mine is we met um, a very nice lady um, when we were at Fringe Central and she is the company manager for the Bee Dance and they oh, are... Oh, yes, Kelly. That's yeah, right. Yes, yeah. I remember and that. And they I are a Taiwanese uh, dance troupe um, who are in Edinburgh. Um, dance called? Bass is actually their full title, but everything says Dance B. Um, and they are around all fringe. What's the show called? Um, I think, well, they're certainly doing Floating Flowers, but I, th I don't know whether they're doing all three. Uh, there's Inner Rain. Sorry, innermost and rage. Um, but she was lovely, and we would have gone to see them. Certainly, one of the shows is down at Summer Hall um, because in the sort of late, like that. yeah, yeah late yeah. morning. It's yeah. it's on sort of late morning, um, but we didn't get to see it. Um, so yeah. The sort of the the short title is B dot dance is what they're known as, um, but that was certainly one. So Taiwanese dance, okay. And if I can find any information, any promotional material for any of these recommendations, I'll include them in the video, um, so that you and certainly we'll put the links in the, in the notes down below.
right, my next one, and I, I was very gutted to miss this actually. And this was this is called Surveillance. Piracy is dead. It just doesn't know it yet. Uh, and I got talking to a chap at the Space UK press launch, and he said he was telling me about this show, and he gave me the flyer uh, because, as we've probably said in previous videos, because you had the lanyard on, um, you were targeted by people at that. That, that evening yeah. and but I got talking to this chap uh, and the flyer says uh, the government hacker who sees too much a university that's forcibly chips its students and what happens when social media becomes sociopathic uh, three dark comedy comedies scrutinize the world that scrutinizes us now it sounded right up my alley <laughs> you did. and I said to him it was right up my alley I said oh I'll, I'll come and see it problem was he didn't start till I think the 14th so it's on now. Um, tickets are ten. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, it's the twelfth. Well, we left. We left Edinburgh on the on the on the tenth. So sadly, I wasn't going to get to see it. Um, but anyway, it's on every day throughout the rest of the fringe. Um, oh, it's changes actually. Two yeah, different yeah. Times. So, sorry. Um, so what day are we today? So we're the fourteenth today. So hopefully this will go up tomorrow. So. Um, up until the 17th it's on at 11.20 a.m. and then it's from the 19th to the 24th it's on at 9.10 p.m. so it goes from morning to evening. Yep. A.m. to p.m. Thank you darling. So I've done the darling thing again there you see. Anyway highly recommended I would definitely have gone to see that if we would have still been in Edinburgh. Uh, the company are called Anomaly Theatre Again, we'll put some links down below. Um, can't believe that we didn't make this again. Now, we were a bit sniffy about this when we originally saw you them to hold it up. doing this. But it is, and for anybody that's been to Edinburgh, they know what I'm talking about. This is the Guru Doodoo's Silent Disco Walking Tours, which just looks great fun when you they pass you. Or they pass, you know, or you get caught up in the middle of them. Um, so they do 50 minute tours every day through the fringe so basically you've got six times from sort of 2 p.m. right up to 8 30 p.m. Uh, and it says to check the fringe website for exact times and locations but that's who they are. It's worth mentioning what they actually do you get a pair of headphones and then you go dancing through the streets in groups of about 30 of you, sometimes more. So, and, and you know, you, people are singing. They're singing to what they can hear on the headphones, and not, not nothing outside. So it looks bonkers. And cl clearly people are having a really good time doing it. Yeah. So welcome to Edinburgh, this beautiful historic town. We're gonna to go on a silent disco tour today. We're gonna to mix the richness of the tradition of Edinburgh in with the funkiness of the disco and have a lot of dancing and fun around the streets.
truth about music, everything seems worthwhile and you see the beauty in everything. Well, this is a collective of that. Amazing. <laughs> you just get into the groove. Once we got headphones on, it was just banging. It was like there was nobody else there. It was absolutely fantastic. If you do one thing in your life, you have to do this. Right, uh, my next one, we saw a clip of this, at the, again at the Space uh, press launch, but this was Jagged Little Pill live on stage, uh, where um, it was the Alanis Morissette album, and I just fancied it. Um, it was, it's on every day, um, throughout the Fringe at Symphony Hall, venue 43. Mm, symposium. Oh, sorry, Symposium Hall. Can't read, I've got the wrong glasses on. Venue 43, uh, and the time is 20, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. for an hour. And it just seemed like a really quite, I mean, I quite like, you've got to like Alanis Morissette. And actually the girl performing as Alanis Morissette had a really good voice and she did sound a little bit like her. Um, I'm not hugely fond generally of sort of tribute act type things, but um, it just... I just I quite fancied it, but but we didn't get there. Okay, and this gentleman came and had a chat to us again at the same um, space press uh, launch, and this was his press release, which we took away with us. It's called "The Words Are There," and it's the blurb is "Life has left him speechless, but in his silence lies a story." A flat in dreamy Betty's town, he awaits her return amidst childhood falsehoods and fragmented memories. He struggles to find the words for this very important day. Um, and again, we would have gone had we been able to. So this, right, that first bit is finished. So we're now in the middle of the 12th to the 18th of August. It's on at 325 and then from the 19th to the 24th, it's at 10 past nine in the evening. Um, and it's the space at the Surgeon's Hall. Um, very nice guy. He's um, Irish, wasn't he? He was Irish. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's a one-man show. Mm. Um, and he was, yeah, we're, we were really taken by him and we would have gone. We would have gone. And in fact, um, he's had some five stars already. Yeah. Um, can't read can't, those. It's no. really tiny, but um, yeah. can't read it. Really. But anyway, yeah. it has had some five stars. Yeah. Oh, um, it's on the top of there as well. Yeah, that, it is. Oh, yeah. the arts. The art review. The, oh, arts, the arts review. review. Yeah. Okay. And, and the guy's name is Ronan Dempsey. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The did words, I keep calling him Roland? You did. I, the words, sorry, Ron. The words are there. Okay. So that's so, that one. Okay. Um... The ne my next one is Fat Roland 7 inch. Now I think it may have actually finished now, but actually um, Fat Roland. Yeah, 13th. Uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah. it's worth mentioning. I did have a ticket for this um, because it was a free show. Uh, I gave up the ticket because I thought, oh, I'll go and see it tomorrow. I'll go and see it the day after that. And uh, I never actually got there. And we did actually meet him flyering oh, we did, um, yeah. on Cowgate and I said to him I really wanted to come and see your show but I wasn't going to get there he was, he was very appreciative now Fat Roland writes for Electronic Sound Magazine um, and his show was about I mean he may pro pop up again uh, but not at Edinburgh Fringe a record shop comedy about not so teenage kicks and I just it was on the free fringe uh, so it's pay what you like, and I just sort of, I just fancied it really. I thought it was really, it sounded like it was, uh, yeah, a comic onslaught of musical puns, cultural references, and audience interaction. And he was getting four and five stars. He had a five star from Upstaged and a four star from the Reviews Hub. So it was obviously doing quite well. Yeah, it was a real shame. Yeah, and it's such a shame, yeah. you know. And then he's he, actually right at the bottom of his file, I quite like this actually. He's given himself one star because he's gone. It was confusing because I only like two unlimited and one star from Fat Roland. So I quite the fact that he put he, he'd only given himself one star on his own flyer. Yeah, you've got to go and see it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Hello, I did my fringe. My name is Fat Roland, and this is my record shop. It is a real record shop and not made up pretend for my fringe show, honest. It has all the normal record shop sections like heavy metal and gospel, early medieval grime, mystery slop, TV theme tunes from Tuesday 9th of June 1982, Kanye West humping the record player, and of course, lots and lots of customers. Lots and lots of customers. Lots and lots of lots customers. and lots of customers. Fat Rollin' presents 7 Inch, a 5 star, 1 idiot comedy commissioned by the Lowry and adapted especially for the 2019 Edinburgh Fringe. 1st to 13th of August at the Free Festival Newsroom. Okay, let's go. The video's finished. Am I even in it? Oh, so, so you don't need my massive Ed Sheeran. Flip. This, oh, I was completely gutted not to see this. I went you around. Kept saying, I know. About it all I, the time, yeah. We just couldn't fit it in. So she sells sea shells by the Scandal and Gallows Theatre. It ain't a fossil. It's fossilized dung. But if he wants to pop it in a cabinet, I don't want to spoil his day. In 1811, the daughter of a Lyme Regis carpenter discovered the world's first ichthyosaur. She was 12. Before she was 30, Mary Anning made discoveries that transformed our understanding of the universe. Then she was written out of history, nearly. I knew about this lady, this is true, um, because I had read Tracy Chevalier's Remarkable Creatures. So if you which is based on her story, as is this. Um, and I saw it mentioned it was sold out on at least one night. Yeah, and, it was, yeah. Um, because we saw it written on the board, so yeah. I would imagine it's being sold out most days. It is um, on until the 25th of August. Um, it's on at 1.30pm, and it's on at the Underbelly Cowgate George the Fourth Bridge. If for some reason you don't get to see this, then I can highly recommend this and you'll find out the story. I mean, it's certainly, you know, just looking at the back of the flyer there, it's getting four, four stars yeah, from the yeah. Sunday Times yeah. and four stars from the What's On Stage. So um, clearly it was something that, yeah. you know, yeah. sadly, yeah. there wasn't, you know, we covered 30 odd shows in nine days, and, yeah. but there wasn't enough hours yeah. in the day, really. Yeah. And we know. had lots that sort of yeah. were all at the same time. Um, um, yeah. So that's that. Our next one was uh, Knitting with Maracas. Now, we we met Olaf Falfa. Falafel. Falafel. Well, I think that's made up. I think, I think his name's made up. <laughs> um, but we, 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 when we were interviewing... Falafel. Uh, falafel. 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 That sorry, was it. sorry. So, Olaf, we're being falafel. completely thick there. Yeah, falafel. sorry. Sorry, Olaf. <laughs> yes, sorry, Olaf falafel. falafel. Knitting with maracas. <laughs> yeah. um, now, his show was on the Free Fringe, and we bumped into him while we were... Uh, we'd just done the socks interview, and we are having a drink with Kevin from the socks. And he came over, didn't he? Yeah. And he introduced yeah. us to him. And, and then we bumped into him. He was flying outside the venue one day. And we picked up the flyer and said, we, we, we're going to try and come and see you. Sadly, we never made it. No. But we did want to go and see it. So um, it says, critically acclaimed idiot, Olaf Falafel. Falafel. Uh, is back once again uh, like a renegade mar renegade renegade shall I read it yeah go on there. renegade master yeah. if you've been to any of his previous shows you'll know exactly what to expect inventive jokes and stupid comedic left fieldery all held together with the flimsiest of narrative structures um, got four stars in the evening standard um, and it's on every day at two, uh, 10 to 3 in the afternoon. No show on the 13th, but that doesn't matter because it's gone. At the Laughing Horse, the Pear Tree. So that's West Nicholson Street. Um, but a great character. Yeah, brilliant. So it's quite sad we, we missed yeah, that. Yeah.
So it's me again. Now, Please. my two M1s, I think I'll do together for, for various reasons. Um, one, we didn't... Re <laughs> that sounds awful. Maybe we don't want to do it as well. We didn't um, intend really to go and see this. It was only because we took photos of this poster because I am Mrs Cole. And it rather appealed to me. So that's yeah. all I'm going to say about that one. I'm afraid I don't know. Um, they it, are still I on. I think it was a kid's show, isn't it? Oh, it is a kid's show, which is probably why we weren't going to go. Um, yeah, it's, Nothing against kids' shows, yeah, but we don't, yeah, we, our no, kids no, no, are grown up. So. No, no. Um, so anyway, it's on at 1.45 every day at it, uh, the Pleasance Courtyard beyond. Okay, so, but great, great picture. Um, and then this because this is finished sadly mm. but this was um this lady we met lots of times um great lady i became um, her it tech yeah for a bit um very passionate about dyslexia she is dyslexic she you know she quite upfront about that so sam rap the dyslexic poet and her show is called or was called the amazing dyslexic poetry show but i'm only think it's very worth because she she's written things she's written plays she's written books and you know and she does workshops and this is basically she, she was talking all about dyslexia and coping strategies etc mm. etc et um so she was had been on at um the small hall loriston halls and she was doing everything herself yeah, and she her was. sister yeah. her twin sister turned up um and she was going to be flyering, and and anybody that was coming to see her was mm. going to be, you know, yeah. hauled in and helping. Um, and so we're really sorry, Sam, that we didn't yeah. get to see you. No, but we... just if if you're interested in that area, then she is certainly somebody, you know, look up her name. And, and I'm sure be, she might be doing shows elsewhere. Yeah, and there'll be stuff. Not, yeah. there'll be stuff on Sam. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's that. I've got a disability, but I've got loads of ability and agility. I can't explain why you feel you have the right to judge me and make me ill, just because you have no free will. Only targets and your tick tick boxes for your quill. Do you think I'm thick, like a brick? Give a dog a bone, I'll do a little trick. I saw a beached whale as I walked along the mumbles one day. The sound of her blow hole, struggling as her white tears seep through her closing eyes, mixing with the waves, crashing over the rocks, changing colour, brown and red as she cries. The harpoon has hit her thighs. She slowly dies, stranded on the red sand as you walk by, holding hands. She sighs her last breath as her eyes close. The peninsula outstretched as her body kisses the sea in the bay. She won't have another day. Perhaps there were no whales to be seen. Maybe it was just me, hidden in her darkness of desperate anticipation of the longbowed snare, like the bullies who simply don't care. I am a person with dignity in my life. I don't need all this cursing strife. Like when you critique my punctuation, like when I was back at school, a useless tool. Did you try and help me? No. But you were quick enough to abuse me and yell when my work was marked down just because I'd struggled to spell. You judged me by my ability at maths my below zero. GCSEs attempted, but I couldn't keep up. I'm just no good at numbers, and the words are mumbled and scrambled and jumbled in my head, like my mother before me, who was mocked so cruel. They didn't look to see her talents, and now she is dead. How many more do I see being yelled at and bullied just like me? 
blinded by science that they don't need, so many lives wasted as they can't succeed, as they don't have a maths GCSE or English you see. The question surely has to be, does anyone need a science degree just so they can succeed in society? Does anyone really understand a Y and X is this and that adjectives in the grammatical world sense? Perhaps they do. But I would like to ask, can they who critique and bully me just because I am different and unique paint wild pictures of summer? Can they share laughter and sing just because they ought to? Or is the reality of their life just to watch chat shows and reality TV? Does this rid them of their troubled nakedness? Or do they sit in a stuffy office, staring out the window as the wind blows, wishing their life away till the next weekend goes, where there is no colour or laughter, just the same old drudgery day after day? Then there's me, you see, with my hidden disability. I'm full of colour, free and at liberty. I'm happy as can be. The question surely has to be, why can't they who critique me open their eyes and look instead of staring at a screen or book? My disability enhances me. Why can't they see? Okay, um, I've now got Bruce Fumer, Fumer? Fummy. Fummy. Fummy, Fumi. Bruce, Bruce Fummy. Now, um, he accosted us when we were on our way to another show. We'd, 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 we'd just eaten and we were just walking down the grass market and he, and he was out there outside the venue flying and we said, well, we can't come and see you because we're going to see this, this show. He says, oh, I won't use actual words. He said, but oh, F that. Come and see me instead. But he was very funny. And actually, Bruce, we, we were trying to get back to see you because uh, again, he's on the free fringe. He was nominated for the Scottish Comedy Awards in 2013, 14 and 17. He was a genuinely funny guy yeah, when we were talking I mean, to him. Just you know, in that few moments, yeah. you know, we were thought, right, well, if we can get back to see him, yeah, yeah. we will. Um, yeah. um, sadly, we, sadly we didn't and actually he was Scottish Comedian of the Year in 2014 so part of his nominations he was also the Scottish Comedian but it's one man show um, he's on until the end of the Fringe every night at 9.30pm in where is he is in Beehive Inn Beehive Inn oh yeah the Beehive Inn Beehive Inn 2 which is on down the grass market yeah. Actually, there's, um, he's not there between the he's not there on the nineteenth, twentieth, and twenty first. Oh yeah. But up till the eighteenth, and then again from the twenty second to the twenty yeah. fifth. Yeah, and he said on the flyer, guaranteed your place by buying a ticket for five pounds, or you can donate at the end of the show. Now, I'm not surprised if he wasn't doing it yeah. because I thought yeah. he was great. He was really, funny. he was very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, yeah. sorry, Bruce, we didn't make it. And um, oh. We've got things stuck to this, but anyway, as you can see, this is Thrones, the musical one, parody. Yeah, we've got a better one, actually. Swap, swap it for that yeah, one. we've got a better one. Which we went to see this last year, and it if you are a Thrones fan, a Game of Thrones fan, it's wonderful. It's amazing. It really is wonderful. Mm. Um, you know, you, yeah. Everything that you would want a parody show to do, they do it. My personal favourite was The Walk of Shame, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was very funny. Uh, anyway, so they're back again this year. They have, in f that's right, we fix the final season. Obviously, final season, controversial. It's Marmite. Marmite. We were okay with it. Yeah, yeah. But I got the feeling that a lot of the cast in this were not. 
and they were quite clear. So how they fixed it, I don't know, yeah. because sadly we didn't get there. Um, but um, yeah, just yeah, very very funny. And we did um, we did yeah. bump into them, and they, and they were selling well. It was yeah, pretty much yeah. sold out. Well, they've uh, sold out every year since two thousand and fifteen. Yeah, so there's no yeah. reason to suggest Especially why would, they wouldn't. wouldn't. Um, so they are on at 10.30 each night through to the 25th of August at the Assembly George Square. Um, and if you are a Game of Thrones fan... You have to go. You have to go. Yeah. In fact, you can even buy the CD, which is what I did last year. Because yeah. uh, all the songs, the parody songs are great. My last one, and um, we bumped into this gentleman who... Well, you can probably see him. It's out of focus a bit, really. But anyway... Um, uh, he was flyering for Jekyll and Hyde, and he's in the video, uh, the uh, the links down below. But where we were flyering uh, across Bristol Square, he it? he was flyering. He was when fl we were walking we were, up, yeah, doing the we final flyering. walk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he he accosted me, and uh, he was he, he was he had a French accent. He was uh, charm cha personified. Yeah, yes. He was, he said, you know. Um, yeah, he was very flattering. He was, to me, he was flattering to me, wasn't and he? And then to me. Yes, exactly. Yes, if I had a face this good, I would be filming it all the time as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, what so, is this for, my darling? So tell me about your show. Oh, my God. I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you now, I might not be able to go and see it because we're it's our last day today and we're pretty full, but it will be on YouTube. So. Oh, my goodness. Where are you from, Ian? I'm oh. from... I'm actually from Yorkshire. Oh, lovely. Yeah. But this is your last day in Edinburgh, is it? Yeah, we've been here for nine days. Oh, my yeah. God. Have you been having a nice time? Yeah, it's been great. Oh, yeah, fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my darling, we're doing the story of... Oh, Jekyll and The story and of Jekyll and Hyde. Okay. We are a very famous French theatre company, you know, and we tell the story of Jekyll and Hyde, but our version, it is much sexier <laughs> and much naughtier. You really very much enjoy it. It's more, more like a sexy party than a theatre show, really. We are on every day in the Piccolo tent in George Square Gardens at 3 p.m. I would love to see all your beautiful faces there. Come along and have a little play with us, my darlings. <laughs> We'll be leave this with you. Thank you very if much. If you're free at three o'clock, come yeah, on down. I'm sorry I am, but otherwise, I'm, it's lovely. Yeah, and really good to meet you. Colleague. Lovely to meet you. Have a good friend. Thank you very Cheers much. Cheers now. Bye bye. Yeah. bye. Oh, lovely to... Are you with the gorgeous Ian, mate? Yeah. yeah. God, you're very lucky, aren't you? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, I think you're the lucky one as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm punching above my weight. I know that. <laughs> Have a gorgeous day, my Thank you. you too. Bye. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and actually, had we still been, in, and we did say to him, we, it was our last day and we couldn't really go. Um, but I did say I would mention it, and they have they have been getting four and five stars. So, five stars from Fringe Guru, uh, four stars from the We Review. Um, that actually, I'm just rereading. I think that's for Don Juan, oh, which was their yes, previous, right, previous show. So previous anyway, show. as a company, they had a company though. Yeah, yeah well spotted, yeah. Um, but it looked like it was quite a good, fun thing to go to. Yeah. Um, and we would have gone had we still been in Edinburgh. <laughs> My name is Mr. That's it, and that's it. We're done. Okay. Yeah. So, thanks very much for watching. We'll do the same again next year. Uh, really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we are talking about doing it for the whole month if we can. 
aren't we, darling? Yeah, we are. We're, consider two darlings in one we're show, considering it. So, but we will probably need some sponsorship, hint, hint, if for anybody out there who wants to sponsor these YouTube videos. Um, but we'll talk about that nearer the time. Yep. Um, so we've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed doing this, although it's been a lot of hard work, hasn't it? Yeah, more so uh, for you. Yeah, but, but um, that's just the but editing yeah. bit, really. Um, but but we've, good fun. It's been great fun. And I hope it's given you a flavour of what it's really like to go to Edinburgh Fringe if you've never been before. Um, we'll, we'd love you to subscribe and hing, ding that little bell because the videos are still going to be coming. Jenny will still be involved in ones where we, we're going to be reviewing things like if we go to a, a concert. We've got a concert coming up next month. We'll probably review that. The Turing Breaks concert. Yeah. Uh, and other things. So hit that little subscribe button and, the, and ding the bell and a thumbs up if you love this uh, and please comment down below of things that you like to see or you've seen at mm. Edinburgh Fringe because half, half of the battle here is reading the comments I think really yeah okay. okay so thanks very much see you next time bye bye bye